Welcome to a long play video on this Monday and uh, I've done well I'm trying to do these at least once a week um, as we are now and um, I'm playing against a friend of mine and someone else who works at G Chess, Chess Patsy UK also known as Tiger Chess. Hopefully you can see the time above us we're both starting with uh, 15 minutes and we get 10 seconds move so the idea of these videos and it is to basically explain the ideas that a grandmaster goes through. You can learn from those ideas. How does a grandmaster think? How do the elite think? How can you incorporate that into your own play? And um, I'm going to play, uh, I think, a Sicilian today. Uh, I'd also like to say, please do make sure you like now this video and more importantly, subscribe to my channel. It helps me greatly. I need your subscriptions. Uh, you're getting free content ways to help you improve your game and I really appreciate it if you can return some favour. Obviously if you hate the video don't bother but why would you hate the video? You come to the wrong place if you have. Um, so I play a number of openings uh, at the start and the Sicilian is one of those openings and uh, I, I, I generally don't recommend this for lower rated players but as I've played quite a lot of chess I, I've um, I've learned loads of different ways to play. And the Sicilian's one is an opening you should play. And you should you should really think when you play an opening, why are you playing it? And you generally play the Sicilian if you want to get a very sharp, aggressive, and attacking double-edged game. Because if white plays the move d4 here, it leads to open, crazy, uh, tactical positions. And d4 is the most commonly played move. Now, white can avoid such sharp moves as d4 by playing something like uh, bishop to b5 check um, but those positions should be okay uh, for for black and um, again like you know you've got to pick an opening that suits your style so if you like tactics then Sicilian is going to be more for you than the Berlin and before you learn an opening you've got to try to realize what kind of game you want what kind of middle game so JT, Chess Pats UK, I, I'm, I think JT is about 2150 ELO. Uh, I can check this. That's the you know my opponent's average. Is going for the sharpest move, D4. And these lead to the most exciting positions. Now, um, I'm going to take that pawn uh, and see what JT does. Uh, the main move here, of course, being Knight takes D4. Now... Queen takes d4 is a little bit of annoying variation. You should know what to do against that. And white can even try experimenting with a Mora Gambit with c3 here. Uh, but the main move by far, and the first move you should look at when you're learning Sicilian is knight takes d4, putting the knight in the middle of the board. And um, I fully expect JT to do that as he does. And we now need to develop our pieces, but one thing I don't like allowing is the move c4, because if white gets these two pawns here, he can really cramp us. So knight f6 is the normal way to continue, uh, and the idea of knight to f6 is to try and stop the pawn coming to c4, because we just grabbed the pawn on e4. So white now has to defend this pawn, and the normal way of doing so is bringing his knight out. Typical Sicilian start. Um, I'm going to think what to play after knight c3. Because there's many different Sicilians you can do. I normally play the dragon. And again, if you're playing sharper openings, more tactical openings. You, you need to know more theory in general. You need to know and... I really understand why you're playing certain moves. Why are you doing this move? What are you trying to achieve? Now, knight to c3 is the main move, but my opponent hasn't played that. And if your opponent plays a move that kind of takes you by surprise in the opening, you should really not rush your move by any means. You've got to realize when something a little bit odds happen and try to work out, well, hang on a minute, what's he trying to do? And from experience, and this is where experience plays a big part in your chess development, I know the idea here, but maybe you can work it out as well. And the idea is he hasn't blocked his C pawn with the knight. So if I play, like try to get into a dragon now with G6, 
uh, white can actually now play pawn to c4 and get this what's called Moroxy bind. And it's a bind because all of these pawns, they stop black from breaking free. One of black's main pawn breaks in the Sicilian is d5. I'm not going to play it now because of e5, etc. But that would stop that break forever. <coughs> so the correct way I feel to play against this move is to try and lash out because my opponent has played a pawn move rather than developing a piece. And I'm going to play the move e5 here which now goes into a more Nydorf Sicilian. I wouldn't want to play g6 now because the bishop would be blocked by that pawn and you've got to try to avoid such things. I'm going to play e5. This is the theoretical move. And I'm going to try to take a little bit of an initiative here because my opponent has played this slow approach to the game, f3. And I'm going to go here, attack the knight, and like I say, if that knight drops back, b3 is the main square. And I'm even going to try harass that knight with the move a5 there, this, this idea. Okay, now bishop here check is a move where I'm now out of my theory, but this makes a lot of sense. Because rather than retreating the knight backwards, JT wants to put the knight on a more aggressive square. Whenever your opponent plays a move, you've got to try to work out why is your opponent playing that move? What are they trying to plan? If you can be one step ahead of your opponent, uh, you're going to be well on your way to winning. Now, he couldn't have played knight f5 there because I just take it and I get a very big center, two pawns in the middle. But after this check here, JT's idea is, well, I can't put a piece on c6, so I've got to put something on d7, that he's going to be able to get a knight there and I won't be able to take it. So I'm just trying to think, and this is where I've got to work things out already. He's played quite a crafty opening choice, so I'm out of my theory, how to deal with this move. Now bishop here kind of feels okay. If he goes there straight away, I take it. So bishop here, he'd probably take, and then I go queen takes. And if he goes knight f5, maybe I can break with this move. And I kind of feel that rather than blocking my position, because after knight there, knight f5, my d6 pawn is weak. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do again about that. Maybe I can, maybe there is some tactical solution. Knight here, here, maybe there's some d5 move there. And if pawn takes, I go bishop c5 and try to play some gambit. Stop him castling. And then if he plays d6, um, how is this going to go? Castles, knight check, king h8. Should we try it? It looks very interesting, knight d7. Knight f5 and d5 is the only move I can see that will make this playable. Pawn takes. I've also got check, knight here, bishop b4, threatening to win a piece. I think we might try this. So knight here, am I sure about this? I'm not sure, but it looks interesting. And this is where bishop d7, the safe choice, but this move is intriguing me because I keep more pieces on. I quite like this bishop. I don't really want to swap it off because my light squares are weak and I kind of want my light square bishop to cover those squares. His bishop is... If it has to take my knight, for example, then I'll be quite happy generally because I get the bishop pair and my bishop becomes strong. And JT's now changed his mind and come backwards. And I feel that that move, to me at least, is a little bit, you know, if you commit to one plan, I feel you should really commit to that plan. And I think suddenly going for one plan and then changing, it looks a little bit odd to me that these pieces are here. Now, I could castle. Now, this move he will capture, and I, I don't think this pawn sacrifice works because I don't have this square. I could go a6, but it's always, if you see a trick and it doesn't do your position any damage, it's often worth just seeing how that trick could play out. And I'm going to play bishop e7 because I need to castle as quickly as I can. And the point is, if he castles, I have queen b6 check winning a piece. So rather than forcing his bishop to make a decision, this gives my opponent the opportunity to go wrong whilst I improve my situation. Obviously, JT just develops in, in good manner there. Now, my general plan here, I feel, is b6. and I, I, A6 now. 
and I've got to be a little bit I've got to keep an eye on this d5 square because I don't want him to get domination of this square that's one positional thing that could really uh, do damage to me and, and with a6 now it's time to ask his bishop the question okay now he takes I'm going to take with my bishop and the idea is to place my bishop on one of these two squares and you can remember earlier I said how I thought this bishop was very important at covering this square and now JT's gone here and we have a real battle for the d5 square meaning that JT wants to take here and then come into this square and it looks like he's his plan has actually worked much better than I thought it would this is a very good move and if I have to end up defending this square I'm not particularly happy I must admit because the knight comes there. If I have, when you when you take on d5, you want white to take with a pawn, because at the moment he has this lovely file, and by taking with a pawn, he would block that file. So positionally, that's a gain for me. But if he can take with a queen there, it's no good. So this has gone a little bit wrong. So it'd be interesting. To see, I'm going to have a look at this on G Chess afterwards to see because I don't know the opening I want to learn openings all the time so if you feel whenever you play an opening you're not sure about always check it afterwards this is why G Chess is why we created it to help you improve but at the moment I'm not sure I really like this now he's going to take here I have the two bishops I mean but I don't like this knight coming in now where do I want to put my bishop here or here I'm not sure now if I castle, he might take and take on d6. Don't like that so much. Um, if I take here, let's just, oh, there's a little tactical idea here. So I take here, he takes my bishop, I take on c3. If he takes back, I take his bishop, I'm doing well. So captures, captures, captures. He has to take my queen, and then I take on d1. And it's a pawn up for me. If he takes my knight, I take his bishop. I'm okay. If he, his bishop is here in that line, and if it goes here, my knight can take on b2 and come out. So maybe this is an idea. Sometimes when you can see your position is going wrong positionally, you, knight, you need to desperately, and in some ways this is desperate, find tactics to solve your positional problems and you've got to realize there's a bit of sense of danger here if i just like play bishop e6 he captures puts his knight here and i'm worse and i don't like this so i want to try to force it so takes is whenever you're doing a little combination double triple check to make sure you calculate it correctly otherwise you'll lose bishop takes knight takes c3 just seeing if there's any other moves. Bishop takes it, knight takes d1. Now he can go into an ending, but I don't mind that because I've got rid of my weak pawn. And if I can get rid of my weak pawn and get his central pawn, I'm happy. So takes, 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 and I'm happy. Now what about if he goes knight takes though? This is much scarier. I go bishop takes g5, he goes knight takes d6 check. And I go king f8. My king has moved. And if he takes here, I go queen c7, and then he comes in. Am I getting enough counterplay there? Or maybe he moves this. I think I think we get some counterplay. because I stop him castling. So I'm gonna go for this, but it's very risky. Okay, let me check. So he should go knight takes, takes check here. What if he goes queen d5 in that position? Then I have uh, queen d5, bishop here, queen takes e5, bishop f6. So I'm gonna follow my instinct and play this move, but I'm a little bit worried. And the key line is, is obviously knight takes e4, Bishop takes g5, knight takes d6 check. I have to move my king. But what I'm trying to do is not give him an easy positional advantage. I'm trying to make it a double-edged game. Because if I go the other way, uh, if you're playing, you know, uh, if you're playing a normal game, you, you're probably getting rid of any winning chances. This way, I'm leaving all three results open. And I'm, I think I'd rather be white here in the short term because I have to move my king 
And after knight takes b7, queen here, okay, he can go a pawn up, but in that position I'm much happier because I've got rid of my weakness. It's a bad pawn anyway, and I freed up my bishops, it feels to me. I've got two bishops in that ending. He hasn't castled there, and I kind of feel instinctively that my bishops might be some compensation. So knight takes here, here takes. Now, can I go king e7? King e7 looks really risky. Uh, knight takes here, but do I want my king after the check on e7 or here? I'm using my opponent's time to think. So takes, takes, takes here, check. Maybe king e7 is playable. Now, if he comes here, I have bishop f5. And if he comes here, check, I can go... Ooh. If I take there, he has castles winning my queen. So takes, takes, takes here, queen here, threatening, threatening this one. Bishop b6, he wins a pawn with check. Now I can again, okay, well I have to take here, otherwise I'm peace down. This is forced, and now I've got to decide. So king here takes, queen here. I feel my king is safer on e7. So maybe I should be playing this e7 move. Very risky stuff. But here, the move that kind of scares me a little bit is queen here. Now bishop here, queen takes here is scary as well. So queen here is very annoying. Otherwise I'd move my king up because it connects my rooks a little bit better. So king here, here, here takes. Bishop f6, knight here check, king here. Not sure I like that because he's going to get castled. So do I have to go to f8, which is a little bit annoying. You've got to try to maximize your position. Can't find a good move after this. Bishop here. This check I'm not so worried about because queen d7, I think. Okay, I, I think I have to go here. I think I have to play this one because my king on e7 is more exposed to the queen either going here or even taking that pawn. I think I have to play this. And the lines which I was trying to analyze was knight takes b7, queen c7, and then he can swap the queens off when he's a pawn up, but then I feel that the two bishops compensate. Um, he, he can't castle queenside, and I can use my a pawn. I can hopefully kick this knight away of my king. So I'm not so worried about that. So it takes queen here. This knight comes back, and I was thinking bishop b5 to stop him castling either side. And if you play something like a4, my bishop can slip into this square. And I've got rook d8 coming, and it feels to me that with my bishops cutting across and the queens on the board, I have pretty good compensation there as well. Now, queen d5, bishop here, queen takes here, bishop f6. The difference that my king is here is that he doesn't have knight f5 check. So he'll have to move his queen. And... I figure that I should be okay there. My bishops do a good job of defending me. But, I mean, this move is probably the critical move. Moving the queen into, into d5. This is probably the most critical move. And you can see here how calculation is really important for every level of chess. And you can often, and what a lot of the top players do, stronger players than me, if they get a bad position, they can calculate their way out of trouble. So no matter how good your openings are, your positional play, your endings, if you can't calculate, you're never going to be a strong player. It, it, calculation is the most important feature for any chess player. Calculation. You need to have the ability to be able to calculate. If, if you can't, if you can't calculate. You're, there's always going to be a time in a game of chess where you need to calculate. And if you can't do that, then you're going to really struggle to ever develop. So put those opening books away and learn about calculation. There's lots of apps you can use. Most of the top websites has tactics, leechess, chess.com. There's chess ball courses where you can test yourself out. Uh, there's many ways. I like chess books in the bath tactic chess books. There's loads of ways, but don't move the pieces. It's all about visualization. I'm visualizing here how the pieces could move. And this is what you need to do at home. You need to do the same thing. It's a skill you can learn, you can improve, 
and the more you practice it the stronger you'll get and this is what now in this position I think that JT is doing well I, I would imagine I don't know if he's better but he's doing well and uh, this is a position where calculation plays that major part okay so he's going here and I have to go Queen here now um, and he's gone in with a queen exchange. So here I was thinking I should have pretty good compensation. This is where I had to go with my judgment, but of course I could be uh, could be disillusional here. So if I go here, the knight comes here, and then I go bishop here, and then he's got king e2, and I haven't got this check because he takes my bishop. I can move my bishop back, goes rook here check and I feel like my pieces are coming to life so that's one idea coordinate now this idea also attracts me but maybe I'm helping him by encouraging his knight to this square now king here knight here bishop e3 looks right I feel like b6 is a good square for my bishop and I've also got a rook here coming in I've also got f5 attacking his knight. He has got the c5 square, but I feel like my two bishops give me decent compensation there. Now if I play here, I don't want to allow those knights to start boogieing. I have to get rid of this knight, so I have to play king here. And I need to coordinate my rooks, get my rooks connected. Just one minute, there's a bit of hoovering outside. I'm gonna just change that. It's not mowing, it's hoovering, car hoovering. <laughs> okay, sorry, I just thought we'd get rid of that. So this is quite an interesting position. I mean, I don't know what the computer would think about this because I, I could just be worse here. I mean, don't, you know, don't, I mean, I'm, I'm a pawn down. But I was hoping two bishops in an open position when there's open lines, bishops and rooks work very well together. And sometimes you've got to go with your instincts. And if you think about this position to the alternative, I had two choices going to a slightly worse position where I'm constantly defending thing the square d5 and my pawn d6 or I've got this position where it's a bit unclear I could be worse but I could be better because I have the two bishops things can go more wrong for my opponent and I, I do think one great skill that um, that chess teaches you actually it, it is weighing up possibilities um, logical possibilities and choosing one even if it's not clear what the consequences are and you do this in life and I think in some situations in life you sort of you know we've all been in tough situations and you look at the options you have the logical options you don't know how they can end up but you've got to pick one and you can put them into quite defined options and I think chess has helped you do that like even if both options might be bad <laughs> you have to decide upon something and that's one of these life skills that chess teach you okay so this is also very sensible but one he wants to keep his knight active but one thing that could backfire here is that I could get my bishop here now he wants to obviously keep his knight here so how are we gonna do this now okay so I could move my rook very simply and then he castles and move my bishop. If he castles, I've always got this check. But I could go here, and after king here, I kind of like this square over here, unless he can has time to block my bishop down with these moves. So bishop here, king here. Can't easily get rid of this knight. So bishop here, pawn here. Seems like a key line. And he's going to get the pawn to c5. And I can't allow that piece to stay there forever. If he consolidates it with a pawn there, I'm not happy. Now, pawn here, the problem is the knight comes here. So let's go for the other option. Not rook here, here, the bishop comes in. And then knight here, I can move my bishop. Should be compensation, I feel, again there. Uh... I want to move it here always so okay now all of these options are not I have to be honest amazing for me um, I'd love to get these and I need to get rid of this knight but here here is annoying I can't lose my bishop here 
And I could sneak the bishop there in that position. So here, here, bishop c6, but then he starts getting these annoying checks and his knights are actually very well functioning then. So I think I have to go for this, but maybe I should move my bishop to a7. So when the pawn comes here, it's not with tempo. But how am I gonna deal with that? Here, here, bishop here, then c4 looks like an excellent move. Now I can play bishop here, and if here, I can take that one and take there. And that looks like, that looks okay to me. Maybe his pawn on c4 is weak. So I'm gonna go here. I hope I haven't missed anything. I've just realized he has this option. Oh dear. Uh, I was only concentrating on his knight going one way. And I've, as soon as I played it, I've missed this option. And then do we have to drop another pawn? I mean, I can, it's not game over because my bishops are still a bit annoying, but it's certainly, that looks like a very strong option, knight here. So I don't like this move. So knight here, bishop here, g3, wins the pawn. So knight here, I'd have to come back where, to a7? And then he takes here, and my bishop is really uncomfortable. I have to put it like somewhere over here, and I'm two pawns down. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll have to have a look at this game afterwards. Um, JT's played excellently, an excellent positional game so far, and I seem to have found myself, and again, he's found the right move. I seem to have found myself in a little bit of trouble from um, an opening I don't know, and it shows you openings are very important, and uh, I have to look at this idea of bishop b5 check, and I didn't realize the positional dangers of it. So after knight takes here, how are we going to keep the game going? So we have to, if we go here, c4, does it help me him playing c4? I don't think so. I have to try and get my rooks here and stopping from castling. I've got to rely on this bishop being a monster. After here, I have to move this bishop and I can't allow the knight to come into this square. So my options are limited between these two. Now, I want to keep this square for my rook. That's my only hope. I don't think I want to allow him to play c4. How does that help me? So rook here seems to be the only, that's not a rook, that's a bishop, the only possible move. And if I get two more moves in, but that's a lot of moves, I might have something. Now this bishop is the only thing making his life a little bit difficult because he would love to castle, but clearly I'm in a bad position here. So I'm gonna be fighting uh, but you don't give up. You've got to maximize your chances. Now this knight can get into this square. But then I do have rook c8. And I cover the important c6 square. I can't allow his knights to come in. I'm covering this square. And my plan is here and here. And then I feel a lot safer. And then maybe my bishops have these open lines. My rook have these open lines. There'll be adequate compensation. Now I also have rook here when he'll have to move his c pawn probably. So I have a little bit of compensation, but he's found another good way in. He's coming for this square. Now, I don't want to give up my bishop. That would be horrible. And what else can I do? Well, rook here, he can even castle, but then I grab one pawn back, maybe. This check I'm not worried about, I come here. And if he castles, he's castling into a pin. So I think I have to. He's going to go b3, of course. And then my bishop's getting a little bit tied down. So rook here, b3. I'd have to bring it all the way back. And then I lose the opportunity of getting that rook in. Not ideal. Another option is king f6 here. But then this check kind of is annoying. But do I have to play this check? king here check king here and this check king here am i going to get mated there is this what i need to do here check i could go to g6 
and on g6 I want to get this rook to e1 this is my only chance I feel so I think I have to play for this move now what happens if he comes here well at least I have this rook so in a bad position this is a bit like before but I'm getting a little bit more desperate of course I'm scared about my king running but the other options are so bad I need to give myself some chances here so I need to give myself possibilities of putting the rook on e8 possibilities of trying to use the bishop on a7 here this is the only way I can play this um, now if he checks coming up the board seems a bit risky in hindsight now I think I should be happy to take a draw here so if he moves his knight backwards and forwards I'm happy but even though I'd probably try to find a way to play on why not because it's a YouTube game and we don't learn anything from draws. Well, maybe not as much. And the reason I put my king here is twofold. I need to get rook e8 and I need to gain some tempo before he can consolidate. Now, another decent move for him is probably to move f4 here, right? Um, because he just keeps that knight there and he might be aiming the castles. But if he goes f4, I'm going to have to play something along the lines of rook d1. I need to destabilize these knights. If I can destabilize knights in the center, I'll have chances. Knights in the center of the board are often stronger than bishops, nearly always. If he, he would ideally like to go f4 and c3. Luckily, c3 nets me the exchange. But if he could consolidate his knights with these two moves, then my bishops are just idiots. So this is another thing I've got to avoid. I mean, I'm trying to play with tempo because if he gets this one move in B3, where on earth does my bishop go? I don't want to allow an exchange. Um, if you've been watching some of my other videos, you'll realize that when you're material down, you want to avoid exchanges, simplification. So even if it's worse by keeping the pieces on, you've got to keep some tension in the situation. So let's have a look. So if F4, Am I worried about this check? Well, I can always come here and he's played the good move, bastard. Now I think I've got to go rook here. Well, this check, I can then come back. So I, I'm gonna to have to play quickly. Ah, but then he has knight here. Takes, takes. Which knight does he move here? Well, if he moves this one, I can come back with a check. So here, here. And that's annoying. So do I move this rook there? How does that help me? Doesn't. So I can grab one pawn back, but it doesn't look very nice to me. And if rook here, knight here, this takes, takes. Do I have any good move there? I don't think so. So this is the problem. Here, knight here. Okay, takes, takes, check. Uh, don't believe it so do I have to go don't like that either so do I have to play something like rook c1 but then this b3 move comes and then play rook here that looks so far like my best chance so I'm gonna go here and if b3 I'm gonna go here now I'm hoping this doesn't lead to checkmate obviously so king here, check, king to g5. And this check here, I only need one move, h6, to be safe because my king can come back this way. And it's too late to start worrying. Now b3, I'm relying on rook here, right? Takes, and then I take here. And I've got quite nice pieces then. And he still can't castle, so there's no point diver and davering. I have to play this immediately even if it's bad and now if I get my bishop to e8 I still keep my pieces right if I did that previously my rook on h8 it is simply trapped now this check here okay he's come back to defend now my bishop can come back and maybe it should come back all the way to this square d7 does that help me I don't think so, so I'm going to bring it all the way back 
and oh, I should have thought about this check getting a little bit short of time here d7 was a much better square to give this I think to give this option because now c4 and he's consolidating those pawns right he should definitely play c4 if he castles I take here but c4 is extremely annoying and he's playing very well he plays it quickly now rook here castles rook here i need to keep the tricks up my time is low i'm going to again i have this bit of pressure a little bit of pressure right if he castles i go rook here and i might win a piece so this has always been my aim right in a bad situation just to try and keep some pressure and now bringing the rook to one of these two squares is my only hope and you can see he hasn't even though he's played c4 he hasn't quite managed to consolidate that center so all i've been doing in this game is giving myself what i feel is the best chances possible and you have to take risks in chess obviously if you don't you're just gonna i see so many chess players playing far too timidly uh, meaning that you know they will easily go into that position we had earlier where they're just a little bit worse they can never win uh, they've never go into a pawn or double pawn sack like this because it can really go wrong now check the knight comes here but what else to do um do we do we want that knight to come in well i don't have a lot of time here and i feel like we should go for this one the knight does come straight in and again the more exchanges that are made the worse my position and I'm very also short of time here so I'm gonna have to play it quicker now I'm doing this for two reasons f6 and my king is trying to trying to be okay here now luckily this knight if his knight could check me I'd be a bit more worried about my king but it can't if he plays rook f1 f6 g4 and my king can even come here okay he's played g3 so i'm gonna go here because one thing you do when you're playing against knights as i said you need to when you've got bishops you need to destabilize them and all of a sudden my position is coming to life now and this is something that can go horribly wrong when you're playing against bishops you destabilize now I don't have king here which I thought I had because of this check that's annoying I thought I thought that was winning for me um, but it's not because of this check king takes here he takes here there's nothing here check and I think I'm in trouble there which is very annoying because I thought I was right back in the game there but he has this rookie one now I can now come in check king here but, uh, I'm gonna have to move quickly uh, maybe I should have moved in with a king I kind of felt that my position was getting better so I wouldn't be surprised if I let this slip when I'm a bit short of time but I still have decent control and my bishops are still working well so it's not a not a complete disaster this funnily enough um okay so i gotta come this way my only idea is to use all my pieces as much as i can i'm still keeping his knight out of the game but he can suddenly think about activation here which worries me but i can use my pawns as i said before to push his pieces backwards and knights can get in a lot of trouble against open bishops in an open board and, and that is something that jt's got to worry about here now rook here king here rook e7 i don't see what i have there rook here bishop here b4 only helps him so rook here g5 is the move i need to play and if he ever comes here my bishop can come all the way there and i've got to squeeze this knight this knight only has this square and I'm using my pawns my bishops in an open position I've kept the position open to squeeze his knight now this check might be worth flicking in 
Um, because if he comes to c2, I can come in here, but I don't have much time to think. I want to get my rook into this square. Now taking here has to be natural. We have bishop d2 as a threat, but maybe this g5 idea. And we've managed to complicate the game. That's the best we could have hoped for here. I'm winning some pawns and my pieces are suddenly looking a lot better. Now this one, he could blunder a piece very easily by bringing his knight back, but he hasn't, well played. But again, this knight here is what I'm going for. So this check doesn't quite help. We're gonna go here, my plan to squeeze this knight and take here, again, squeeze that knight with the bishops. My bishops are really coming to life. His knights struggling against them. My bishops stopping any checks and my pawns are starting to look very dangerous. The major threat is just to take here, but I could also be just grabbing the pawn on f4 and all of a sudden I'm a lot of material up. Okay, so he's gone here. Nice idea. Takes, takes, pawn takes here is one simple way to play, but I like my bishops. So bishop here would be my first fault, but you've got to be so careful of knights. They're so, so tricky. I'm going to keep my bishops on, and this one keeps my dark square bishop, and I always have king g2 if he gets me a knight check, which will gain a useful tempo attacking his rook here. And a knight here, I'm going to take this one. If he goes like check here, then I have king here, and I just have to run with my pawns. Maybe some bishop coming to e2 at the right point uh, could also be also be very good. Um, of course, these pawns are very dangerous, but they're a bit slow at the moment, and, and I'm quite well advanced over here. So he has gone here, and I'm going to just take this one. Aha, but he can take there. Bollocks, did not see that. Takes, takes, and that is really annoying. So maybe this first. With the idea, this is no longer good because the knight takes, but I'm gonna just try and see if my G pawn can come through. So let's just push, very simple idea. Um, and, it, and I've totally missed this one, but I've got Bishop here, gaining a tempo on his rook. Uh, but I don't know, this was a little, JT playing very well today. Very good game from JT. Did I have anything else there? I don't think so. So here I've got to give up one of my bishops and I gained this tempo on the rook. And I'm just, okay, so he's played this and now, well, the simple solution is to keep pushing. And my ideas are clear. Bishops should be better than the than the knights. Now, can I just push this pawn? Now, takes and get my rook behind is something well worth considering. But I don't see why I can't play this first. This would be a very strong situation. Can I push it one more square? Again, I don't see why not. As long as I get my rook behind the pawn. And I'm going to do that by taking this one, which I was going to do anyway. And eventually getting my rook behind the pawn. Now we can win my h pawn. But this one was a bad move from him. Because after here, I'm totally covering that pawn. He had to get rid of my h pawn. That that was that was forced. Um because let's remember my bishop is also covering this and now I keep my h pawn and uh, well JT has resigned there oh, that was bloody close that was bloody close and he's lost in this position uh, we're going to have a look at this now um, it's a very good game and I'll just say good game uh, you had me and I'm just going to have a look at this game on G-Chess, so um, if you do want to leave, do uh, do remember to please subscribe to the channel. But uh, I'm now going to use this um, 
new website that we've been developing to look at this game. So let me just get it up and uh, bear with me one second. I just need to get the web address and um, then we will uh, have a look at where I could have gone. Well, well I want to learn the opening. So th we've got a new feature on GChess. It will be coming out next week. So I'm going to give you exclusive insight to this new feature. And I'm just going to now change things so you, you can see uh, what I'm seeing on the board. And uh, let's do that. So this is GChess, gchess.com. You can see some subscriptions. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to start a new screen. So bear with me. I know it's all dark. I should have set this up before, a true professional. But we're going to add things so you can see them much clearer. And we just need that. And you need the camera of me, I guess. You don't really need the camera of me. And we're going to have a look at what I could have done different uh, in the opening because I got a really dodgy position there. And uh, let's just get this picture of me down, whether you like it or not. Oh, look at that. That's quite a cool beard, isn't it? And okay, that'll do. You might have to. All right, so this new feature. And I'm just going to see if it works because this game hasn't come in. It might not work. It's going to be also awesome. And you can put your games into this. But as it's a very recent game, it takes a couple of minutes to do this. So let's just have a look at that opening with the G Chess resources and just see um, what could have done. Pity it should refresh, but refresh games. Let's try that one. OK. Anyway, so I was black. So I'm going to flip the board around to get it. And we can now make the board a bit bigger, which is awesome. And um, let's put the boards and we're going to, I can remember the game. So we'll have a look. So it went like this and I'm just going to have a look at the critical moments of the game. And JT played very well there. And we can now go to the part here where he checked on B5. Now this is a move I'm not very aware of. And the resources you can use to learn about this are, first of all, you've got the deep engine analysis, which will tell me bishop d7 is a move. But anything with an orange thing up here, these are the tools that you can use. And they're all very easy to access. This one here is online games. This one is the week in chess. And this one is the encyclopedia. So I'm first going to look at the Ginger Gem encyclopedia and just see what we've got here. So we've got a lot of analysis by a grandmaster here. It wasn't me, otherwise I would know about it. And let's see what our Ginger Gem analysis gives. So it does actually give both moves. Interesting. So Bishop D7, let's just have a look how... Now I thought this would probably be equal, and yeah, I thought he'd have to take. I might have taken with the... Uh, queen there, but let's have a look. This and the computer thinks this is equal because of d5. Okay, so that's the move which is very easy to miss if you don't know it, even though I was talking about this move a lot. And the point being, this is often a break in the Sicilian, and if he recaptures, you just go knight b6. Okay, that's good, at least I know that now. Now, after knight bd7, I was expecting knight f5. So if I ever get this again, I want to know what to do against knight f5. Well, it does give my pawn sack here d5, which is interesting. This is the move I wanted to play, right? He has to really take this, otherwise I get a very nice center. And now here, I was thinking about playing bishop to c5, but the computer actually thinks this is a little bit better for black. And by the way, just to let you know what this is, we've, we've spent a lot of money creating this computer analysis of one of the strongest computers you can find has done deep analysis on every position in our encyclopedia, five minutes on every position. And you can imagine the resources it takes to do that. And the computer goes along with the encyclopedia. So I'll just do this. And I think I can already see that this is quite good compensation. Bishop a4, b5, we kick the bishop back. Yeah, that looks all very playable. And now we get the bishop pep and his knight's attack. That looks great. But what about the move JT play? Now, JT just played the knight back to b3. And this is still, this is still in the analysis here. Okay, interesting. And we played 
bishop to e7 and JT played knight c3 here and this is where our deep analysis has gone because there's no resources this is a fresh position we can turn on our, our computer here and it does give the move a6 now isn't that what I played it seems like JT has found a very interesting way to play the opening just trying to control this square and I think didn't JT just capture here yes and I took I took with a bishop and now bishop g5 and uh, yeah well okay the computer actually quite likes black's position here is this right it says bishop e6 and there's no resource this is all new stuff but I was worried about him taking here this is what I was worried about and after bishop takes this move why 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 is this not a problem for me well the computer actually likes black's position after this maybe I was overestimating white's chances here with this knight on this square but maybe looking at this position again it's always good to get the computer's point of view we can see that with me castling and maybe playing f5 I can play around that knight and maybe this position is just absolutely okay for black maybe it's just okay for black maybe there's no no real issues here so maybe I shouldn't have been you know maybe I I mean positionally I look at this knight and I'm like mm, not so sure but I do have the two bishops and I just want to go back and see how the game went because I played this kind of crazy knight takes e4 now the computer I didn't think would like this and JT played excellently here king f8 but it only looked you see the advantage is only a little bit for white so I actually think my judgment was okay here my judgment was not too bad but let's have a look at this ending because maybe I could have played this better <coughs> well I played here rook d1 was a very good move by the way I was thinking the knight comes back here but I clearly got play here so actually this this was in hindsight not the way to go was it and if I get this position again I will just play with the two bishops because I want to know what if I get this again what I'm going to do and okay the rest of the game um, maybe maybe it's not so interesting because the opening's over I've clearly gone wrong here so as long as you learn a lesson from each of your games that's the main thing and the lesson I'm learning from this is I think I played all right actually but I got a little bit I didn't see <coughs> my main response my main problem was that after bishop e6 and this here I didn't take into account black's dyna dynamic possibilities in, re in return for giving up a central square and I think black's dynamic possibilities with f5 coming uh, and play on the queen side make up for giving up this square and that's probably due to me not having much experience in this opening position so for example in this opening position I, I, I hardly ever get structures like this and my understanding of it is not much and this is probably going to be like a lot of you you get into middle game positions and you just learnt the opening from chess or ball wherever but you don't really know the ideas in the middle game positions and it takes a lot of work to get those ideas hence why I say uh, maybe uh, exchanging openings a lot is is not the right way to play okay we can actually see now I just want to show you this new resource that we're bringing in on G chess which I think is going to be one of the coolest things online I really do basically you can leave this window up while you play chess and after you've played your blitz game you can see my game with tiger chess has come in rather than putting the boards in I can analyze all of my blitz games you just press the analyze button and it should take not too long to analyze I know this page is still in work so we could see okay well I can try it on the other ones maybe it won't work there but what we're doing with other blitz games I play today it will show you here underneath let's just bring that game up let's bring that game up it will show you this is a blitz game I played earlier today all the resources here in the tabs over here so you'll have instant in instant access to basically like the, it's like the Googler chess this position where the different resources whether it's new in chess or encyclopedia uh, the short and sweets the chess ball the ginger GM courses you'll have access to all of those things nearly immediately after playing your blitz game obviously this is not released on the main site yet because it's not quite ready 
but you can see that you play a blitz game you just come to this site you press the analyze button and immediately you'll find out where you go wrong and you saw my process of doing that with the game of JT took a little bit of time with this you will get those resources immediately and I don't think there's anything like that in the world at the moment and it means you can improve from playing blitz and this is much more powerful than anything else out there because you have all these tabs no other thing has uh, tabs to Ginger GM videos to um, the encyclopedia a, a ready-made encyclopedia online games offline games new in chess YouTube videos you get all of those to reference your game with and you get instant results so this is going to be amazing I think uh, all right well thank you so much as always like and subscribe and uh, uh, well played to JT who played uh, a brilliant game there and I just managed to outplay him a little bit when my bishops got working there when I managed to push his knights back uh, the time trouble uh, really really didn't work well for him there uh, but I'm still happy to win because he works a G chess and I'll never hear the end of it if he won so phew.